Welcome everyone. Welcome to this Valentine's Day special that I have for you guys running tarot readings for only the signs requested. Okay, so if you don't see your sign here, it's because it wasn't requested. How do you request? Well, you know, you got to be my subscriber. You got to hit the bell for notifications so that you're notified and I let people know when I'm doing these things so that they can comment on my community page and let me know. All right, so um, yeah, hit the bell and subscribe if you want to get readings for your sign in the future. And for those of you interested in a private reading, because reminder, it's not a private reading. So take what applies, discard what doesn't. And if you want a private reading, well, wait to the very end and I will give you the details for that. Enjoy. Sagittarius, welcome on in. Welcome to your love reading. And I got to tell y'all, you almost didn't get a reading, but somebody at the last minute requested Sagittarius. So here you are. We're doing Sagittarius. Y'all might want to, I might want to say thanks to that person. Because <laughs> as many of you know, I only do um, the signs that are requested. So if you're not seeing your signs here, and there were about four that were not requested, um, I think it was Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Libra were not requested. So in the future, if you want to make sure that you're being requested, you've got to, you got to sign up, right? I said that in the intro. I digress. I apologize for repeating myself, but we've already got cards talking. All right. And it's a uh, neighbor of chalices in reverse. Not a fan. Okay. It could be jealousy, particularly in this deck. But generally in tarot, um, it represents someone who is emotionally immature or emotionally insecure, or maybe they're emotionally unavailable, or there's just flat some inability to share their feelings with another person. We'll see if that comes out again. Uh, could be a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, but let's do a five card spread for you to see what is going on, just to get a general overview. And we're gonna go way deep in this reading, by the way, we're gonna start off with that five card spread. But then we're going to get into what this person is, you know, this person of interest for you, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what the two of you want and need, get some advice, you know. But let's see, for Sagittarius, five cards spread for starters. What's going on with Sagittarius and their love life? The tower in reverse. Well, you know, is it, that's not the foundation. And that indicates to me... Um, there's a fallout that is maybe inevitable that somebody is trying to avoid, but is this even avoidable? Um, it could be that somebody needs to change, but they're avoiding it. They're maybe afraid of change is maybe one reason. Um, but again, I'm seeing somebody clinging to something that is inevitably not going to work out. Might be an integrity issue. You know, if this is a three-party situation, if there's some kind of emotional betrayal going on, um, you know, this is, I just heard cluster F. <laughs> it is in my, I just heard it. I got to say it. I got to say it. Okay, let's look at what the main issue is. Six of Swords. Somebody moving on, okay? Somebody needing to, you know, find brighter horizons in their life, but uh, there's some kind of troubles that they've been in the mix of right we saw it there um, but they need to leave those troubles behind and there might be some regrets associated with this but there's something about this moving on that is necessary it's necessary in the past four of swords is telling me that someone was you know well i mean you know in this deck this is a self-service card all right might have been somebody wasn't doing anything, but, you know, they were taking care of themselves, if you know what I mean. Um, it can also be a card indicating passivity. Somebody was not really talking, taking action. They weren't opening up. They were very much kind of in a contemplation. There might have been silent treatment for some of you, okay? Okay. Um, 
Others of you, somebody might have actually been ill. I will clarify that in a bit. In the future, you've got six of wands, and I am seeing the time span of the next six days from which you see this, okay? And it has to do with getting attention. But in this particular deck, it has a lot to do with going back and forth and maybe even playing some little cat and mouse games because somebody here wants attention. Oh, look at me. You know, that type of thing. Um, there's some kind of back and forth about where you grow together and then you kind of grow apart. And then you grow together and you kind of, there's some kind of back and forth going on here with the attentiveness, somebody giving their attention. And I'm also seeing here that this back and forth is maybe feeding somebody's doubts about, you know, I, I don't really think I'm going to be able to build from this or am I? You know, again, there's maybe some back and forth where you get attention and you think maybe there's something can be made out of this and then they pull away and you're like, I, I don't know how much longer this is going to last or how this is going to fall out or how do I delay what we both know is going to happen, which is... A fallout. What's anchoring all of this together is four of pentacles in reverse. Not a fan. Cannot stand it. You know, this is a very greedy, self-interested card. This is somebody who is just flat not giving um, because they're very much invested in themselves. Um, they might be that they are just emotionally or financially bankrupt and they flat can't they have nothing left to give to this okay but I am seeing some controlling behavior some greedy behavior behavior somebody here might be really possessive stingy in terms of what they're giving the overarching nine of swords this is drama my god you know I mean um, this is somebody is, is at least one of you if not both of you very anxious not at peace, maybe losing sleep over this. At best, I mean, maybe you keep each other up late at night with some decent sex, you know? But I'm also seeing that there's maybe a distance issue, which I kind of saw back over here in your near future. And then that's the outcome of getting some kind of, there's back and forth, back and forth, trying to avoid this, which I'm hearing is unavoidable. And then in the outcome, the overarching energy is, you know, somebody finally gets some distance to maybe try to restore harmony within themselves. And maybe, uh, but again, I'm seeing somebody might want to begin again, begin again. But let me tell you what happens after this nine of swords. Some of y'all already know. Ten of swords, right? And it finished. finished okay let me clarify these what is somebody please show me with the six of swords the main issue here moving on moving on please show me for Sagittarius <clears throat> okay. um, somebody is trying to maybe move on from a long-term commitment Again, if it's a three-party situation, somebody here is maybe in a marriage that they've been in for a very long time. I don't know why I'm getting that 30 is popping off at me for some reason. It's a 30-year marriage or it's nearing 30 years or somebody was 30 when they got married or something to that effect. Uh, other people here, uh, maybe they were actually widowed because sometimes this is the divorcee widower type card. Um, if it's a widow or widower, this is somebody who's um, maybe still grieving and needing to move on. Um, but there's also an issue here of what other people think of them, their status, their reputation out of the world. So perhaps in some respect, again, could be marital status or if they were recently widowed, well, what are other people going to think? Maybe my adult children that I've moved on so quickly, I'm already dating somebody else. It could be a number of things, okay? Um, Career might be at play. Um, somebody's been in a lifelong career and maybe they're trying to, they don't want other people to see this. And that's, I'm hearing it's causing a bit of a snag in there. It's not a clean move on because there's a lot of perception management going on here in terms of <clears throat> what are other people going to think about me moving on and how I'm moving on. 
is the Four of Swords in reverse, please. Please show me a little bit about the Four of Swords in reverse here in the past position. Oh, this is a man, you know, and, and this is a sexual union with a man. Anything more? Okay, oh yeah, I'm getting more. Um, <laughs> okay, so, you know, I am seeing that there are, are some feelings, but very hidden. And it might have to do with a child or a partner who's significantly younger than them. It might also, regardless of age, have to do with getting a new beginning. But I am seeing a lot of this kind of back and forth, over the hills, through the woods. Uh, something is not straightforward, right? This getting on with things is, is just kind of like, not, it, none of it is clear cut. Like, if somebody knows that this is done and over with, but, and again, I saw that King of Swords there might be an, an uh, Aquarius Libra Gemini air sign, but notice here's a three-party situation, older man, younger woman, there's the wife in the background, and I'm just going to tell you in this particular deck, this is a man who is, um, he's not really loyal to her, but, and he's entertaining somebody else, but he's kind of, He's not leaving his wife, okay? Because this King of Swords is kind of a, got a love nature of, I'm going to do it because that's my word. I gave you my word when we agreed to get married or to stay married or whatever, right? It's, it's a very logical, um, I'm going to honor my word to stay in this marriage. It's, it's not, let, let me say it like this. He's not in the marriage for heart-based reasons. I don't know. I can't make it really any any simpler than that. He's not in love with the wife, but he's not leaving the wife. I just heard too much invested. <clears throat> it's a strategic, tactical thing. He's not leaving her. Okay. Six of Wands. That just fell out. So, yeah, this back and forth going on and on might have been really aggressive. And I'm seeing particularly with the feminine counterpart here. Again, whoever the feminine person is in this sexual union um, have maybe went after this or has been. There's been somebody going after what they want pretty aggressively. What is that four of pentacles in reverse at all? What is the Four of Pentacles in reverse about for Sagittarius? Please show me. Please show me. Okay. Well, okay. This is this has been going on for a very long time. All right. This not opening up, not giving generously, holding back, being overly protective, to the point of stingy, greedy. This kind of dark, long ass time. All right. I'm going to tell you right now, intuitively, if you are dealing with somebody who is nickel and diming you, and they're telling you that they're just going through a rough patch or a hard time or whatever, liar, liar, pants on fire. This is who they are, right? This is how it is. This is who they are. If you're not getting what you value out of this person, you ain't gonna. Because this is who they are. This is who they've been for a long time. I don't know why. I'm being told somebody needs to pay attention to patterns. Patterns of behavior. Right? People, everybody likes to think of themselves highly. Everybody likes to justify why they do what they do. To let themselves off the hook of doing what they've done. This is nothing new. It's human behavior. We're all guilty of it. This person has a way of justifying not giving to something. In their mind, they're totally justified. And if you look back over time, they've always found a justification and they always will. It's their MO. I'm sorry. This is, uh, I just got a bad attitude about that energy. I don't like it. I will admit bias. I don't, I don't like four of pentacles. Probably one of my least desired cards in the deck. I don't like Four of Pentacles, period. Uh, yeah, there might be a time and place for it, but I most certainly don't like it in reverse, which is how it's showing up here. 
Uh, tell me more about this. Nine of Swords. Oh, yes. My gosh. This is just nine at somebody, okay? I mean, listen. I want to find some silver lining here, you know, and say, well, maybe, maybe this person's going to be keeping you up at night with some nice sex. That would be the most positive translation I can give for this card. But when I clarify it, nope, nope. Clarification is frustration, loss. I mean, this is an eating away, nagging, gnawing away at you. And this is a very mental energy of anxiety, tension, like it's just going to keep whittling down at your peace, probably until you're like, you know what, I give up. Bring it, bring the tower. Let's have it. I accept. Um, this has a lot to do with commitments, okay? This is what somebody, somebody is maybe avoiding a commitment, avoiding ending a commitment. Um, and it has something to do with stability and security. What's the overarching energy in this relationship? Over, oh, oh, okay. So we've got cassette. I told you round and round, over and over for a long ass time, outdated thinking, conditioning, replaying events over in your head. And again, I, I can see it over here. I sense this is for you. It could be reversed. I sense it's this other person where they have this pattern in their life, okay, that they can't seem to break out of. Separation, uh, sadness, missing you, thinking about you, yearning, unsure of future. I really feel that attached to her. Healthy choices in love and in life. Self-love, self-care, being happier, receiving what you need, progression, arriving, moving on, closure, issues, um, and self-indulgence, okay? Focusing on self, self-worth, time to heal, shadow work, self-appreciation. Um, wow, wow, we can go so deep with that. Let me, let me put these cards out of the way so that we can go deeper, okay? Because I, I really want to expand upon that. And um, starting with the healthy choices, okay? Um, let's pull from a self-love deck because this card is talking about making a self-loving decision. So um, we'll get to these in a second. Spirit, what would a self-loving decision be for Sagittarius? Oh gosh, really? Are you serious? Spend time alone. Return to center, stop, breathe, you are safe, find balance, dance, and clarify your desires. You know, all those cards coming forth for you and, you know, are telling me that there's maybe something right now that you're engaging in is not self-loving. There's some kind of toxicity here, right? Why does, why does the tower not stand the test of time? Because there's an integrity issue. There's something off at a foundational level where, you know, this is, you know, it's like the leaning tower of Pisa, right? Except, well, it tumbles over. It's just not going to, it wasn't built right. It wasn't built for endurance from the get-go. So I think you need to get, you know, clear within yourself about your desires and 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 i think that's going to come from you spending some time alone um and maybe you know taking a deep breath especially i'm sensing if you're dealing with this type of anxiety stuff and frustration that i saw where you're it's just nagging and gnawing away at you um you really need to get some alone time which would have been over here you know with that four of swords and get very centered okay um, maybe you don't need to respond at this time to anything. You just need to find your peace and get clear about what it is that you want, not from a place of lack, but just out of a place in your heart and knowing that whatever you choose, that you're going to be safe, that you are being protected and you will have the resources to do what you need to do. But this is also an energy about flexing and flowing. And that in order to get positive change in your life, you're going to have to make a move. And you're being asked to make a move after you take some time out to get clear about what direction you're going to go in next. 
And this is about taking maybe a moderate approach, not going to extremes, but again, a very peaceful, confident um, approach. Let me see if I can, we're gonna put that off to the side. We will see if it comes back up again, but I want to clarify some other things that the closure issue, you know, that, that I saw somebody having is, um, you, you know, that eventually the day is going to come where, you know, game's over for somebody game is over for somebody. But until that time comes, it's round and round and round back and forth that I saw with that, that six of, uh, wands. And boom, there's a separation. Some of you do not have the confidence in yourself in the future. Some of you, um, you know, maybe you've tried to put some distance between yourself and this person, which I kind of saw there. But I also saw it might be mutual that both of you, when you're apart, there's this kind of waiting. And particularly, I'm seeing with the feminine energy, waiting, yearning, longing. But again, you're being told that you need to do some work on yourself, uh, the self-love. Let me see what the shadow energy is here because the cards are indicating that um, this is part of what you need to be doing in your alone time. You need to uh, seek answers within yourself is what that card is saying. Um, time to heal, shadow work, self-appreciation. What's the shadow energy here between these two? Please show me very clearly what the shadow work is between these two. What shadow energy is stagnant? I'm seeing like a plateau. I'm seeing like something is not going to be able to grow much more than this beyond this point. Some of you have plateaued in this relationship and you know that it's not really going to get beyond this point. There's an issue of judgment. What are other people going to think? And I told you all that with the, um, you know the garden card it's clarifying whoever has been in a very long uh term commitment okay that that person's very concerned um particularly them might be both of you but i see especially them concerned about perception management what other people think maybe power losing power um doubts mm, and i saw that particularly you know for you and the self-love work that you need to do getting your confidence back within yourself, finding answers from within, not really looking to others. Silenced. Well, I mean, I'm getting this vibe that whatever this issue is, it's like somebody kind of feels like they can't really open up and talk about it. What are other people going to think? And so... Put that off to the side, see if that comes up again. What is the romantic advice here? Very soon, playfulness, soulmate. <clears throat> That's interesting. Yes, this is your soulmate. Well, you know, soulmates bring lessons and they could be, you know, all manner of relationships. It doesn't have to be romantic. Um, you know, it could be a family member, a friend, uh, but this, whoever this person is, there's, um, there's some kind of soul lesson you have in being united with this person. Probably the two of you learning something important from one another. Uh, the card says clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Well, I mean, I, I said that with the self-loving cards that you, you've got to take a time out and get clear within yourself about the direction you want to go next in your life and then take action. Playfulness is about recapturing romance and allowing your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. I think, again, this is about you taking action, but I also think this is about you taking action that allows you to have a more of a lighthearted, open, childlike nature with your love life because there's something very, very serious, okay? There's something very serious within the tone of this relationship. What are they thinking? What are they thinking? What are they thinking about this relationship? What are they thinking? Please show me clearly. What are they thinking? Take that. 
Um, it's, it's like they are, <laughs> I just heard I can't, I can't. Um, and nine of cups. Well, there's something satisfying about this relationship. I think that the two of you, um, you know, you know how, you know how to have fun together. But there's a missed opportunity and there's six of pentacles in reverse where something is not balanced in the give and take of this relationship. Um, I'm also seeing I can't manifest happiness with you. It's weird. It's like on one hand, um, the two of you have an understanding. There's satisfaction there. On the other hand, somebody surrounding this is just they've decided within their head they can't fully engage in this they can't fully give themselves to this and that they're going to miss an opportunity with the six of pentacles in reverse not a fan it's kind of reminiscent of four of pentacles in reverse where um something's off in terms of generosity somebody is like this is like conditional giving Or giving with strings attached. Um, somebody might be in debt. Somebody might be, again, very selfish. I saw the selfishness with the Four of Pentacles in reverse. The giving is not fair, okay? You I don't know why I'm here. You deserve better than this, okay? And I just heard some of you know it. There's the tower. This person is either, you know, going to have some kind of breakup fallout in a relationship or there's some type of a lack of integrity. And it might have to do with, yeah, I mean, that's like this, this breakup is imminent, okay? But it might have to do with the fact that there's been some kind of betrayal or deception. And this person Probably the reason why I'm getting four and six of pentacles both in reverse is because they're being very self-protected. You know, I'm getting this kind of selfish, self-interested energy um, because they know that inevitably this is going to fall out and they are protecting their own interests. There is something they've invested themselves in that has not been a good investment for them. And they know it. And they know it's eventually going to burn to the ground. And they're, I'm hearing cutting their losses. Okay? How you feel? Oh, my. Do you love this person? Do you love this person? You've got a lot of feelings for this person, it seems, without Ace of Chalices. Very committed, very committed, it seems, to this person. Um, maybe married to this person. For some of you, or very having very traditional beliefs towards this person. But I'm also seeing with the Seven of Wands, some kind of resisting partnership weird. It's like Taurus and Gemini might be relevant to you. Anything else for Sagittarius? Fire sign might be relevant. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Anything else? Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so I'm saying interesting because, you know, you have the Ace of Pentacles in the upright. They have it in reverse. Um, are you resisting... Oh, uh, wait, I'm looking at this. Are you resisting a decision or a partnership having to do with a fire sign or a man that is very passionate? It's like you think that there is maybe some kind of, like you value this opportunity or this offer, what this person is bringing to you, although on their end, like they've not made some good choices. 
they're maybe choosing to not invest in something. They're holding back. This thing's not going to succeed, I'm sorry to say, on their end. For you, it looks like you are looking at this like this is an opportunity. This is a substantial offer. Like you could maybe do something with this. I don't know why you see like this person as maybe a good investment, but I see ultimately um, trying to move away from it. I just heard not for me, not for me, not for me. And at the foundation, we got the devil card where, you know, yes, maybe Capricorn is relevant, but regardless of sign, I'm seeing somebody trying to move on, but there's a soul tie there now. Because maybe, you know, the two of you had this sexual relationship that was quite maybe erotic. Maybe they tempt you, you know, but I'm also seeing, you know, if we don't put this in a sexual tone, I'm, I'm kind of seeing here that somebody is leaving um, maybe a home or a residence moving away. But even if they do that, they're still going to be controlled by financial ties, maybe to the ex, maybe to a partner from the past. In some way, they don't have control over their finances. And that might be why you're dealing with somebody who's got a pretty tight fist. Like they're handling you with a tight, a tight fist. Okay. What are they feeling towards Sagittarius? lonely, isolated, alienated, friendless. They can't talk to their friends about this. Disgusted, revolted, nauseated, repelled, resentful, indignant, bitter. Again, I do feel like this goes back. What are other people going to think? Right? It goes back to the shadow energy of judgment from others. I'm really getting that this is tied in. And for fear of that judgment and what other people are going to think, it's kind of boxed them in. That's pretty sad. We, we become a victim of our own demons. You know what I mean? Like what we hide in darkness controls us. If, if you can't talk to people about it, you're like, you're held hostage by your own secrets. How are you feeling, Sagittarius? How is Sagittarius feeling? Empowered, hopeless, unsure. Oh, uh, well, that's quite the mix. I think that you see potential here with this person. I'm, I'm, I'm being taken back to these two aces, which could re be like a new partnership. Um, and I think that you feel like this person brings something substantial to the table on a material level, on a values level, you know, on an emotional level. And in some way, the union is maybe empowering to you. However, um, there is a resistance to actual partnership here and having to kind of walk away from a home or an opportunity and walking dead straight into some toxicity. I mean, this is drama city. Look at the foundation. They've got the tower. You got the devil. This is, you know, and so I feel like this is, there's some kind of teetering back and forth of, yeah, but we've got something here we could work with. But, you know, um, I don't think this is going to go in the right direction. I, I don't know what direction to go in with this because, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good here on the table, but am I going to even be able to do anything with it? I don't, I don't think so. I do feel that whenever you get into this kind of hopeless energy, right, that's when <clears throat> this kind of stuff is happening. Where do those cards go? This nine of swords, you know, and that the being clarified by the mice where it's frustration, anxiety, tension. And those are the moments that spirit is like, listen, in your alone time, you need to find your balance. You need to get centered. You need to get grounded. 
You need to breathe, okay? You need to know that you're okay, you're safe, but you got to get clear within yourself about what you desire. Like, I, I get it. I mean, you know, there's a lot of beautiful people out there. There are, you know. But not all of them are worth having a re relationship with. Not all of them are, you know, good prospects to tie yourself to. Spiritually, sexually, financially. I can still feel you. That's what this person is thinking of you. Anything else? Your intensity frightens and allures me all at the same time. Oh, they're into you. They're into you. Anything more? Anything more? Anything more? Please tell me. Your words linger in my mind. I, I think they think about you a lot, okay? Um, and, and I am seeing with the Nine of Cups, it's like I think that, that there's something about you that makes them very happy. They're very satisfied, okay? But... Um, it's a lot of mentally bound up, tied up, wound up energy of holding back because I have to and I can't really give to this and I'm going to have to pass on this opportunity. How about Sagittarius? Well, that just slipped. I'm not the same person that you remember. So has this relationship changed you, Sagittarius? I've looked you up online to see what you've been up to. I still love you. Wow. You know what I'm seeing here is that you really do care about this person. But just keeping it on a real note, a real note, because I, I want to honor these cards about you being balanced and grounded here, okay? When I look at the cups that they have versus what you have and the cards, I'm seeing that you actually love and care about this person the only cups that i'm seeing for this person towards you is that you satisfy them you make them happy think about that maybe that's why i was hearing earlier you you deserve more than this okay you deserve somebody that's going to actually partner with you but i'm seeing somebody resisting partnership here and i feel like actually you're bringing in commitment you're bringing in love you're bringing in some stability security or at least you see the potential for that with them from their viewpoint they're going to enjoy themselves with you but they're not going to really invest deeply and they will hold themselves back because they've got a they've got drama okay they've got drama at the foundation i wish i could take the things back that i said yeah i mean i don't know what that's about but um you will okay um so what they want well they're guarded they're guarded let me go again um, somebody, again, missing an opportunity, going to end something in a partnership. And I think this is faded. I mean, once I'm seeing cycles here, though, again, with this person, with the, you know, the wheel and the wheel of fortune and the world, it's, you know, you see the circles, the cycles, okay? I saw it with that, with the clock that was showing up, right? Remember when I brought that up, I said, this person just keeps, this has gone on for a long ass time. So, and then we had that cassette there over and over and over again, replaying events over and over. So I don't know if this person um, has, Right, this is a lot of trials and tribulations that have gone on for a very long time where they're disappointed, but they keep trying to end something with a partner, but they keep coming back around. All right, they're trying to end something with a partner, but they keep coming back around. Um, 
And I'm getting the feeling off of that Four of Cups, like the issue in terms of getting closure with this partnership is that they don't like the terms it's ending on. There's some kind of exhaustion here, some kind of disappointment in terms of this ending, and that's why it keeps going round and round and round with this partner, might be a Gemini, okay? Uh, maybe they like it this way. Again, given given all these, you know, this has gone on for so damn long, which I saw with the Nine of Wands, and these cycles with the cassette as well, you know, and the clock, it's like, why? why? Because you want some other cup to be offered to you, you... You don't want, you want this easy. You want this um, nice and easy, okay? But because it's not nice and easy getting an ending, you keep going round and round and round the mountain with somebody that you are partnered with. Or um, I'm hearing deliberating about a decision over, and it's an over, and it's, ugh, okay, whatever. I don't know that they want to do it. They want to do it. They, I don't know if they keep thinking that, well, if I give it more time, you know, then maybe, maybe we can get closure to this partnership when the circumstances are in my favor or to my liking. Like, look, can we do this when this feels right and good for me? But because it never feels right and good, they just keep going back. That's, that's an interesting message. Okay. Um, what they need, what they need, what they need. What do they need to do? What do they need? What do they need? Oof, okay. Well, you know, they need to get real clear. They need to cut the bullshit out. That's Queen of Swords, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. And she, she's got a BS detector. Like, she ain't taking any shit, okay? She's, she ain't got time for it, all right? She's gonna cut the, cut the shit out. I'm a Queen of Swords, Aquarius. And tell you cut it out ain't got time for it honey um virgo <laughs> but this is about you know it, it you know may you gotta make a clear-headed decision this person here's got to make a clear-headed decision to spend some time alone it's almost like the two of you being told you take a time out and try to get some enlightenment okay get to the truth of what you spiritually need to be doing with your life um what's your strategy what is a fair equal exchange in terms of that nine of cups that i saw showing up for, you know in terms of your happiness because i'm going to tell you somebody somebody is getting their joy and pleasure but the way they're going about it is maybe through sneaking around lying cheating thieving some lack of integrity some unequal exchange there we go again back to that four and six of coins and both in reverse it's not fair. It's not equitable. And then with the page of wands and the knight of cups, somebody needs to think about their romantic life and how they're getting satisfied. Okay. They need to really get clear within themselves. It's kind of almost the same message as you, Sagittarius. Let me see. And we'll compare and see how this goes out because it's almost like what they need is what you were advised to do in your situation. Okay. What Sagittarius wants. I, I think you want to move on from the difficulty. There's that six of swords that we saw in the main issue. In the initial spread. Same card, different deck. You want to get on with it. I think, you know, you, you want to get on to calmer, uh, clearer days. Okay? Some of you are waiting. There's your energy. Queen of Fire. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But again, I'm seeing a three here maybe indicating that there's some kind of somebody's looking outside of a partnership. And it might be not necessarily that there's any cheating going on. It might be like a back burner relationship where somebody's maybe thinking about, well, if this relationship doesn't work out, you know, uh, maybe I can go be with that other person. All right. Oh, wow. I see you at a crossroads here. Um, I see stuck stalemate energy. Where did that come up before? Stagnant. Mm -hmm. It's on your end. It's on your, this is your, this is the shadow stuff that you're being advised to work on. 
Sagittarius, and if it isn't you, it's the other person, all right? It is a general reading, you know, apply it how, but whoever this individual is here, this is their shadow energy, stuck, stagnant, waiting around on, on, on something to happen for them when they need to get clear within themselves about what they're going to make happen in their life. But I feel like, again, there's a lot of doubt, maybe insecurity, and that's more of the shadow energy. I feel, look, it's showing up on your side. That is a doubt or a lack of clarity. And you were advised, get clear within yourself, but you're not. And that's why things are stuck. And it has to do with moving on. There's some kind of heaviness here. There's some kind of emotional heaviness about you, you know, packing your toys up and going home, so to speak. Um, but frankly, you know, here's the deal. I got to tell you, this, this eight of cups is about emotionally disconnecting from something that maybe in the past you were emotionally connected to. It did give you some happiness, but where is this person going? They're going to nine of cups. And frankly, nine of cups is where this other person is at. They are satisfied, but there's something in the exchange. It's like you're satisfying them, but they're not satisfying you in some respect, in some respect. But if you move on, what comes after that Eight of Cups? Nine of Cups. You do get your satisfaction. But there's some kind of heavy burden attached to it. Might have to do with where the signs I'm seeing here. Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, uh, possibly Moon, Cancer, um, Pisces. There's your energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, I think that um, you are trying to maybe make a slow and steady decision and and i did see that the, the self-loving cards were advising you to do that take the time to get clear within yourself and then make a sure-footed decision but i feel like it's it's i am hearing with a heavy heart with a heavy heart because there's a lot of things i think that you don't know about with that moon card as well that part of you doesn't have clarity because you're not being given all the information why are you not being given all the information well you know, there's somebody's trying to stay in their power. There's a breakdown of communication over concern about what other people are going to say or think or do. What does Sagittarius need? growth. You need a relationship that nurtures you and allows you to grow, to have a healthy, loving, growing relationship. Anything else? Anything else? I just jumped. Progress. You need somebody who's also going to open up the lines of communication for you where you're going to be able to talk a lot more and it's going to be more open than what you had. Because I'm telling you, this person I'm hearing is obscuring something. You're not getting the whole truth with this person, or you're getting filtered truth with this person. Um, you need something stable, secure, practical. But again, I'm getting this very nurturing, down-to-earth type of energy with the Empress and the Queen of Pentacles. This is a very, both of these are very mothering, mothering, nourishing uh, energies. Okay. Some of you, um, particularly if you're a childbearing age and you are wanting children, you need, you, you need, you know, marriage material. You, you need somebody that's going to be a quality father for your children. Okay. And I just don't think that, um, this person, um, they're, they're stuck in, in patterns. Uh, they are kind of just, there's integrity issues here. I'm seeing with the tower and the seven of, of, of pentacles. I'm seeing that they're not giving to you at the level you deserve with the four and six of coins in reverse. Um, and they seem quite satisfied with the arrangement. It is working for them. But you need, you need something that nourishes you and allows you to grow in a very practical way and get some progress with your life. You need somebody who's going to just, uh, I think, talk to you more. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. You know, that's that's her counterpart, that king of pentacles. Could be, again, an earth sign here, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. But the idea behind this, this power couple is that um, they're both bringing value to the 
relationship, they're both adding stability and security. I hear they reinforce and strengthen each other. Each person comes with their own strength that strengthens the other. It's like you can actually build a ten of couples, a ten of coins legacy with this couple. Okay, um, this is somebody that you can, you know, a power couple that you're gonna you're gonna make a life with. Okay, but you need to think about this. There's the um, hangman um showing again more the stagnant energy but a need to get enlightenment a little bit similar to them with their you know hermit card <clears throat> representing virgo um that's seeking the light from within this is looking at why are things stuck is there a sacrifice you need to make is there enlightenment that you need to gain do you need to have a wake-up call, an awakening here next to that judgment card that leads you to make a decision about where you're going to be getting your attention from? And I'm seeing, you know, getting attention from somebody who... Um, comes in and, and brings you some good news. I mean, I, and this is somebody, I, I'm also hearing like quick, quick to give you um, some value. And again, I'm not usually a fan of the Knights and the Pages, particularly Knight of Wands can be kind of a lusty energy, Page of Pentacles. Again, these are like under 30 type of energies, kind of immature is the way I usually look at them. Like, ah, oh, he's not giving much, but I'm more reading it as somebody who communicates, I am going to bring some value. I am adding value and they don't hesitate. I'm reading it as this is a person who's not going to half step or hesitate. Even if all they have to give you is their last penny, they're going to give it to you. Okay. They're going to give you attention. You need to make a decision. I don't know. Maybe this person has like a lot to give, but they're spread thin and they can't give it to you or they're not going to give it to you. Right? Like I remember, man, so many years ago, I, <laughs> I, this was really, okay, just side, side note for those of you interested, because I think it might tie in. Um, somebody asked me, you know, why I was with my ex-husband, and uh, because he, 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 he was like this, <laughs> you know, he was one of these, but worse, you know, day late and a dollar short, okay, but um, he's like, why don't, why don't you go after somebody more like this, okay, and somebody who's got, got deep pockets, I said, well, I have been with somebody like that. I, I've, I've dated that. But the problem is that person didn't give me any money. Like, why do I care that you have all this money if you won't share it with me? And that's kind of the energy that I'm seeing over here is, you know, what good is it if they won't share it with you? Um, it's a heart behind it. It's a heart behind it, okay? If you have somebody who maybe doesn't have a lot to give, but they would give you your their last dime... Um, think about that, okay? Um, and I feel like this is what you're being advised to do is to take a time out and contemplate and meditate on making a decision about seeking attention from somebody who doesn't hesitate in giving you what they have, as little as it may be. Because I'm seeing here that that's where the love is. And I, I do feel that this is probably your energy, uh, Sagittarius, where you're coming in. You have, again, a very maternal energy, which I saw represented over here. But this is also very loving, all right? This is more on a practical, sustainable, like I'm, I'm putting food on the table for you, honey. Eat your vegetables, okay? But this is, I love you. I'm your mom. I'm going to take care of you, you know? This is the ideal wife and the ideal mother here. Okay, um, who's going to give themselves to that? You need to make a decision to give yourself to somebody who's going to give themselves to this energy. Somebody who is going to allow you to step into this, um, you know, power couple dynamic where, you know, yes, you're bringing the security and the stability and the trust and they're matching you at your level while allowing you to grow and expand in your life and get the progress that you need with your life. I'm going to leave you off with some advice on how to get more love in your life, Sagittarius. More advice for Sagittarius 
to get more love in your life. Sagittarius, please. Sagittarius, please. Yeah, it's a lot of um, feminine energy here, by the way, that I'm, I'm, is just very much standing out. So I feel like what you need is to nurture that more within yourself. Turn on your heart light. Actions speak loudly. I told you. For them, look at the patterns. Don't pay attention to what they say, all the justifications and explaining away and the rationale, rationalizing it. No, 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 no. Just, just look at the behavior. Look at what they do, not what they say, okay? It's going to tell you what you need to know about this person. And as for you, with your actions, well, you need to take some after you take a time out, okay? This card says express your love through actions. Yeah, but to who? Okay, you need to think about that. And turn your heart light on. Allow yourself in this moment to reflect on a time when you experienced love. My gosh. You know, it's like the, the cards keep repeating themselves. And that should let you know, um, you know, what messages are really being reinforced here as very important. I hope that I've said something to you that has blessed you. And please know I'm wishing you all the best. Be blessed. Okay, thanks for watching to the end. I want to talk to you guys about private readings. Nothing is as accurate as a private reading, right? Nothing. And that's for me because, you know, not only am I pulling cards just for you and only you, but I'm looking at your unique astrology when I do these readings. So as many of you know, I do more than just love readings, but I'm going to speak to the love readings right here. Uh, for those of you who want to know what kind of love readings you can get from me, I'm going to tell you. But if you want to know more about the other readings I have, go to crownedones.weebly.com and you'll see everything that I offer there. Now, briefly, you know, I think the easiest, quickest reading you could get from me is probably like a 12-month love forecast. This is really good for people who are single or you know, they're trying to make some important decisions with their love life over the next 12 months. And they want to know, you know, what is the energy supporting? What are the challenges? How do they make the most of it over the next 12 months? Really helpful for that. Um, if you're in a relationship, I do sinistry readings between you and that other person where I look at the strengths and weaknesses of the relationship. I give advice. I pull cards again based on the astrology and tarot. And I've also got a this or that uh, reading or a should I stay or should I go reading uh, where I've kind of got, you know, these two options at play with the cards where let's say you're choosing between maybe two dating options and I'm looking at the synastry between you and these two people. Again, what are the strengths and weaknesses of either person? Who should you go with? Or on the should I stay or should I go? Um, this is if you're in a relationship and you're trying to make the tough decision, you know, what's going to happen if I stay versus what's going to happen if I go. And um, finally, I do offer a reading, which I think is the most important reading you can get, but it is pretty comprehensive. Frankly, I think it's the reading everybody should get first, but it's like two hours long. And for that reason, it's my most expensive reading, which I do offer payment plans for, but um, it's the ideal life partner reading. I personally feel like don't go on a date without it. <laughs> you've got to know, you've got to know, you know, um, your love nature, your sexual nature. Um, what are your needs? Like who's going to check those boxes? Who's not? I'm going to look at your Juno placement. Who is your ideal life partner? I'm going to look at what's going on in your seventh house, your eighth house, your fifth house. And things like that are going to help you understand yourself better so that when you get in and out of relationships, you understand what works for you and why. Very important reading. Um, but again, everybody's at a different, you know, budget. And so, you know, I even offer a really a custom reading. If you want to come in and just, uh, you have a budget, you have a time frame that you need to work within, um, we can definitely do that. And you can just come in with your own questions and I can answer that. But obviously, I can't do, you know, 20 questions in 20 minutes, right? Because um, for those of you who know me well, know I can go very deep on one question alone 
particularly if I've got your astrology. We can go way deep. So if you want to get a private reading with me, like I said, go to crownedones.weebly.com. Would love to work with you. Till next time, be blessed.